In last week's episode, part one, we headed to the shoreline to get creative at night with the iPhone 13 Pro Max using Apple's Pro Raw format. In this week's episode, part two, we're diving into Lightroom to process those night images and add a really cool light beam effect that you're going to absolutely love adding to your creative toolbox. Before we get started, here's a quick recap from last week's episode in the event you missed it. So we are in Lightroom and I just want to go over a few little tips and tricks here to really make this, this image come alive. Um, I've already made some basic adjustments here um, and you can quickly take a look at you know some of these sliders I'm really really stretching uh, due to the nighttime but um, you know if you look up here you can see you know we're shooting at ISO 1250. Um, so that's pretty impressive that we're getting these results. Now, I will say that if we zoom in and look at the stars, you know, you're getting some movement in there. They're not going to be as tack sharp. Um, so, you know, there is that, of course, but, uh, you know, we're talking about an iPhone here. This is pretty impressive. Um, so anyway, I did make some, some adjustments here. I didn't want to waste too much time. Um, but what I did want to point out here is that when you're shooting an Apple Pro RAW, um, the profile in Lightroom automatically defaults to this Apple Pro RAW. Now, if it doesn't, I highly recommend you choose it. And when you do, you see a slider here with a mount. Now, it automatically defaults to 100, but watch what happens if I draw this back down. This is what your JPEG would look like if you weren't shooting an Apple, Apple Pro RAW. I mean, it's a huge difference. And if you needed even more light, you can stretch this the whole way to 200. And look at that. I mean, that is pretty dang impressive. And, <laughs> you know, look up here at the histogram. It's it's just amazing what what the iPhone Pro 13 can do. Um, I'm just, just awestruck of the, the fun I've been having with this, this phone. So anyway, um, let's move on to some of the fun stuff here. I want to start first with a light beam. Now, if you look, I did actually have a head headlight beam on. And in the other image, um, I was uh, also holding my, my headlight beam in my hand. I had it strapped around my wrist. And I knew it wasn't going to be enough light, but I was hoping I'd get more than I did. <clears throat> um, excuse me, I'm losing my voice a little. I do apologize. Um, so I, I, you know, I knew this little trick I can do to, to make up the difference. So let's, let's get into it. So check this out. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to go up to our masking and we're going to go ahead and choose a brush mask. Now, what we want to do for starters is, and let me just, um, we're going to add a little exposure here just for now. We can adjust these later. I want to put a little bit of highlights in. And I think that's all we need right now. We can adjust as, as needed. This actually might be too much. And now what we want to do here is we want to bring shrink down our brush size and get it as close as we can 
to the top of my head where the light source would be. And you're going to go ahead and click. Just click. You're not going to click and drag as you would normally with a brush. Okay. Now here's the trick. Now we're going to move our brush to our desired location. And I want it somewhere around this star cluster right here. We're going to increase our brush. All right. Now we're going to hold down our shift key and we're going to click again. And look at that. Pretty dang easy, pretty dang powerful. And of course now you can go over here to taste and you can really do whatever you want, you know, if you wanted to. You know, obviously that's extreme, but um, you know, I mean, we can we can play a little with the with the, the slidings. We can we can kind of do whatever we want here. I might bring down some of the clarity, maybe a little dehaze. Uh, see, I'm losing some color there. I'm not going to touch that. And even with the clarity, I usually just do if I mean, I don't do this too often, but I usually just do the exposure and the highlights. Um, but this is a lot of fun and it really, really makes the difference on the on the image. But we're not done with this yet. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to commit that. And we're going to make some other changes here. <clears throat> I mean, again, the light that this sensor is bringing on this iPhone. I mean, it looks like it's, um, <laughs> you know, sunset. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna first start by typing R. I wanna crop this a little. I just wanna see what it looks like. And by the way, a little um, a little tip I just wanna mention, um, a good habit to get into, something to consider in your workflow. I always keep my thumbnail up in this area and I use it while I am post-processing because uh, well, I should start by saying I, <laughs> I'm on a 32 inch monitor. So I'm seeing the image really large, which is, which is good because I, I get to see more detail and, and all the fine, you know, you know, subtle things in the image. But at the same time, sometimes you lose the global focus of the image. You can overdo something or underdo something. So using your thumbnail while you're doing stuff like cropping and, and color changes and, and whatnot is always a great idea to just look at what's happening there in this in this area. Just a good habit to get into. I've been doing this for years and it just it's so helpful to me. Anyway, um, up to cropping, um, I want to go ahead and well, first I should mention that I unlocked my crop. If I if I didn't, it would constrain the ratio. So now, because I want to remove some of this bottom section and see what it looks like. So now when I release this, I am looking up here. I'm seeing what the image is really going to look like again, uh, rather than looking looking in this area. Um, and I, I, I do kind of like this look. This is bugging me a little right here. I'm not sure there's much I can do about it. Um, you know, I could try to go up a little bit more if I wanted to. I don't know. What do you guys think about something like that? This is a tough one because these are these are kind of staggered. That's not too bad. But the, the point here is um, I just wanted to, for this particular image, I just wanted to draw, draw me in a little bit closer. And... Um, and then have more more weight towards the sky and the light. So I think we're going to go ahead and commit that. So we just hit our return key. And uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to use a, um, a gradient brush uh, filter down here and just darken this up a little. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go in back into our brushes and we're going to create another brush. This time we're going to use a linear gradient. That's what I meant to say earlier. And we're going to go ahead and drag this up. And we're going to try and um, just bring this area down a little with their exposure. We don't want too much focus on that. We want it to be, you know, nice leading lines drawing us in. But, you know, we want, we want to bring some of the nighttime in. And then I'm going to draw down my shadows. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm looking at my, my histogram. I'm already starting to climb up here. And if I put on my... My warning I can see that this is all underexposed. I'm not too too concerned with this right now. I may play with that later to adjust that and even if it is a little underexposed I'm really not too worried about it. Again it's it's a night shot. Um, so the other thing I might do here is just add a little clarity. I don't, I'm not sure. Mm, nah that's not gonna work because that's gonna that's gonna brighten it up again. Um, let me bring my shadows down a little bit more. And I'm also going to increase my blacks. And this is going to give us more of a matte look. 
And you know what? I don't mind that at all. I think that's pretty cool. So that's pretty good. And we can bring this down a little. And you can see what happened when I increased my blacks. So I kind of fixed this problem already. And that looks pretty good. Now, if we want, we can adjust this by increasing, by moving the, um, the gradient. Or we can also enlarge it if we want to increase the gradient and see what that looks like. And if you press your H key, you hide the whole guide, which is nice. And then, of course, if we want to see before and after, we can just go over to the eye here. Wow, look at that difference. So, you know, that is, that's pretty neat. I, I kind of like that. Now, we're going to go ahead and commit that. Now, we're going to go back into our masks. And this is a great tool. Save so much time now with the, with the new masking. We're going to go ahead and create another mask. But this time, <laughs> we're just going to simply select sky and watch this. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You know? So, this is just great. So, now, you can see your, your overlay is on. Now you don't even have to worry about shutting this off. This it's it's nice for me to first to recognize what it's what it's doing. Okay, so but now I want to get rid of it because now it's you know it's in my way. It's distracting me. You don't have to unclick this. Just start moving your sliders, and it will automatically disappear from you. So I think what I want what I might want to do here is uh, play with the exposure first, and maybe bring that down a little as I'm watching my histogram. I'm getting some vignetting, and but it's not it's not too bad. And I'm going to raise my contrast. That's going to make these stars pop a little. And we're also going to do the same thing with the clarity. We're just going to bring a little of that in. That's also going to pop those stars. It's going to vignette a little. That might be too much. You know, you got to play with this. Again, I don't, I don't want to waste too much of your time here. Just give you the idea of, of what you can do to really get the image to pop. Um, there's a lot of light pollution here. Um, Again, it's it's a nice effect in a way for, for what the shot is. I mean, um, obviously there's no Milky Way in here. Uh, in fact, the Milky Way in this particular evening wouldn't come out to 4 a.m. And because this was a an on a, a whim, um, <laughs> just spontaneous last minute decision, I didn't plan any of this out. Um, but anyway, so I might I might bring some of the saturation out. But if it affects my sky, which it is, I'll do this through my HSL panel. Um, but that's not too bad right there. We can play with this a little bit more if we wanted to. But uh, we're going to go ahead and keep that the way it is for now. And we're going to go ahead and go over to our detail. And I already have a slight bit of sharpening in there, so I don't need to do anything there. The vignetting is bugging me a little. I can either adjust it in here, or I can go back to my lens correction. Choose my manual. I already added some vignetting to try and fix this. And now that we adjusted our sky, We'll have to do it again. Now, this is the taste. Some people really like the vignetting. Uh, you can do another linear gradient if you wanted here, which would be nice. So you get it dark and it slowly gets down. Again, this is all the taste. It's really what, how you want to, uh, you know, what you want to do with your image. But, you know, this is something that uh, that isn't too, too, too bad. Um, my light up here looks like it just it's cutting off too much. So I'm going to go back into my brush. I'm going to choose this light right here. Um, this light, this this mask, and again, if you always want to see what mask you're working on, you can just either show overlay or just uh, turn it off over here. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. So first, I'm going to try my highlights. See what that looks like. Maybe just bring that down, and then bring maybe my 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 exposure down just a little. I mean, just a little goes a long way here. I might be able to make that up there. I don't look too, too bad. I could probably do a better job, but again, I'm trying not to waste too much of your time here and just give you the idea of how to do this. Anyway, let's just go with that. That, that looks pretty That looks pretty awesome. Um, yeah, and there you go. Cool effect, all done on an iPhone. All right, that's a wrap. What do you guys think? You plan on playing with this trick? I certainly hope so. It's a lot of fun. And if you're new to Lightroom, you'll pick up quite a bit by just trying this. Have a great week, everyone. Go in peace and be kind to one another. Photograph whatever pulls at your heart and don't ever feel doubtful about your work. Just keep shooting and enjoying the experience. As my friend Allie always reminds me and our friends, it's all about the experience.